Hi, I'm going to show you some different ways of giving feedback on Google Classroom assignments. Um, I'm going to talk about a few different ways. The first is just using the comment box within Classroom. The second is using comments inside the doc or the slide, if that's how students have turned in their work. The third is using a text box inside the doc or the slide. Uh, the fourth is using stickers or smiley faces, etc. as just informal feedback. Then we'll talk about audio comments that you can embed in the assignment and then a screencast of the document using Screencastify or other software. This isn't really a tech instructional video so much as just showing the different ways. Um, I will link out to other uh, tech videos that will teach you how to use these things if they are uh, tools that you have not used before. So looking here in the classroom, I can go to my grades and I have a very small class you can see. I'm going to go over to the writing diagnostic um, and I am going to open that up. View submission. So here is what it looks like when I'm in marking my students' work. Um, at the top, you can see the name of the student. This is the testing account for the for the CPS that the CET set up for us. Um, you can see the name of the assignment, writing diagnostic. You can see that it was done late. That's because I just did it now. Um, you can see over here, this is the return button. When you're finished, you can, you can click that. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then over here, you can see the files that are attached. That's what we're looking at here. This is a doc. You can tell because of the little blue button there. That's what we're looking here. It looks like a Microsoft Word document, but it's in Google Docs. Here's a spot for a grade. And at the bottom is private comments. Those are comments with the student only. The class can't see them. Um, up here are some editing tools. Those are the normal Google Docs editing tools. You can go ahead and use those inside Classroom, which is quite handy. Um, here are the comments, the grading window. That's what we're looking at. And the comment bank. I'll talk about that in just a second. It's a really handy way of putting comments on things. So if I want to mark this, um, I can do one of a few different things. I can, as I said, just use the comment box. The comment box here is this thing here. I can just make some private comments here. Um, hello, this is a great writing sample. Uh, whatever I want to put there. Um, and then I can post it. I can also use uh, an extension called Moat. That's this thing down here. I can click it and then I can start recording a comment. When I record the comment, it records it to the internet and it makes a link for the student to go look at later. Done. Um, here it gives the student, when I click post, a link to go see, to go listen to it. Um, it takes just a second to process. Um, yeah, it didn't transcribe what I said very accurately. You can get in and edit that. I'm not sure what I was saying at that point. Didn't say wicked. Click it and then I oh, can click recording a comment. There we go. When I record the comment, it records it to the internet and it, okay. So I can save it and listen to it. I can record it again if I don't like it. The student, if the student doesn't have the extension on their computer or if they're looking at it on their phone, they just get a, a link and when they click it, it will take them to a website where it's, where they listen to the same thing. So that's quite handy. Um, the advantage with the, with the comment box is that it keeps a record uh, of all of the recurring comments that you have on a recurring assignment. So if you have a weekly assignment that's just the same document over and over, like a portfolio or the workbook, you will just keep a record of all the comments that you made. You can use that moat feature and you can also use the comment bank. I'll show you that in a second. Some cons of the comment box is that um, the comments might start to stack up a bit. We've got 15 weeks. I think we'll probably break it in two chunks, but if we got seven or eight weeks of assignment altogether, then it'll just be maybe a lot of comments. Um, they have to be general to the document. They can't be specific to a word or a phrase or a paragraph or a page because it's just the comment box off to the side there. And you also have to return the assignment for students to see them. Um, when you return it to the student, it looks like it's missing. Um, but um, that's, that's just the thing that you have to do that it looks like that in the gradebook. So back into that, I will show you how to use the comment bank quickly. I'll link out to another, another video that does it better, but here, this is a comment box. You can see I've got a bunch of sort of generic comments here that I've added to the comment box. And if I wanna make a comment here um, on this sentence, I can add a comment um, either by, let's see, scrolling over here and clicking that thingy. If I'm gonna look view it a little bit smaller so I can see the whole page. Here I'm going to start with a hashtag and then I can search my comment bank, all the stuff that I put over here before. Um, this is a very good opening sentence. It's, it's just a prepared comment that I have or one that I use frequently. And then I can just 
pop in and grab those without having to type them out every time. It links directly to that, that bit, that sentence that I've highlighted, so the student knows exactly what I'm commenting on. It's not a general comment to the document. Okay, so those were some of the comments inside the doc or the slide, actually using the comment function. Um, that's the little comment button right here. You can add those comments by clicking what you want to comment and then clicking that little bubble thing that says add a comment. If you're on a Mac or a PC, you've got um, a keyboard shortcut on a, on a Mac, it's a command option M. And on a PC, something like con control alt M, something like that. It'll tell you here um, when you look at comment, mine says um, command option M. Yours, if you have a PC, will tell you what that is. Or I can just choose here comment. Um, cancel. So those are comments inside the Docker, the slide. If it's inside a slide, it looks it looks just the same, um, but um, it's it's a different uh, format for for inside slides. Um, you can do the same comment features just like that, and the comment uh, bank works as well. Um, the comment boxes work a bit better inside of a slides doc. So I'll close this off. I'm going to go back into my grades and go find the weekly portfolio. There we go. So the weekly portfolio, the testing account guy has got it. So I'm going to open that up. It looks just the same as the, as the docs did, but the features, uh, the editing features will be the slides editing features rather than the docs editing features. They're all quite similar. Here you can see the slides up and down the side. So it looks quite a lot like in your window when you just have it opened up, but it is here inside this, uh, uh, the classroom uh, marking window. Um, here, same thing, you've got place for a grade. You've got private comments just like we looked at. Here though you could also add a text box. So for example if I wanted to look at say the student's first study log and I wanted to make a comment here I could just put a text box in and type away. Hey this looks really great. I love your activity and the evidence is good. Um, I can fill that if I want to make sure that the student can see it. I can change the font color. It's just all of the same tools that you normally have um, in slides, um, but it's just here inside the, the uh, uh, Google Classroom marking area. So I can change the font color if I want to really stand out drag it around. This is something the student will see on top of their work when they get it back. So all of, if you put in a text box like this, or if you put in a shape, you can just drag it on there. It'll fill it up and you can just type inside of it. Um, I think you need to work on your uh, vocabulary next time, something like that. So then when you get this back to the student, um, if you return it or if you don't return it, the student will see all of these in here, these little text boxes. You could train your students even to uh, make, to go look at your comments off the slide. So I get to make these comments off here so it's not getting in the way of their work. As long as you tell them where those comments are going to, oops, where those comments are going to be. Um, for me, I think I just put it right on top of what I was commenting on. The student can then look at it but also they can delete it. And that is one of the drawbacks to doing text boxes. Um, you can comment directly on the work, but at the same time, the student can delete those comments um, on purpose or by accident. Um, I'm gonna show you another one that's kind of a nice little fun informal way to comment. Um, I've made up a big document full of little stickers um, that you can use on your student stuff. These are just PNG graphics and GIFs. They work just like images. So I'm gonna go find some that I wanna include in my students' work. So for example, um, I really think that this is some excellent work this week. All I'm gonna do is select it, right click copy or control C, however you like to copy stuff. Get right back in here, control V to paste it on or right click paste, oops, paste. <laughs> right click paste. Oh, it doesn't like right click paste. Okay, you're gonna have to do control V to paste. It's unhappy with that right now. Um, so I can put stickers on here to make it kind of cute. I'm gonna put on here, um, let's see, this is a great improvement. Control C back in here, control V. All these little stickers you can resize. So if you wanna make them really small or if you wanna make them really huge, that works. Um, let's throw a couple of GIFs on there. 
Um, let's see, I really like this one. Control C, hop back in the assignment. Control V, okay, this student has done a great job. Obviously they turned in a blank assignment. That's not exciting, but we're hopefully that's not uh, sarcastic. So now I've got some stickers that I put in here. Those work to indicate pretty clearly to the student how I feel about it. Um, uh, those are just stickers I'll send out to you so you can uh, have them if you want them. And uh, it's just an informal way of putting some sort of low stakes feedback on students' work. Um, I've got some that are a little bit more specific, like um, talking about connectors and detail and support, things like that. You can make your own stickers. They're quite easy to do. Um, Audio comments and screencasts are the last two things I'm going to talk about. If you are in uh, inside a, a slides like this, you can insert audio, but this is audio that has to be something that you have in Drive. So it has to be something you've created either with an extension inside Chrome or something that you've created on your phone and saved to your Drive. Um, I've got an app that does that. There's a video showing you how. Um, Voice Record Pro, it works quite well, sends automatically to Google Drive. So to insert some audio, I am going to pop this out into a new window over here. This will just pop it out into its own file so it's not within Classroom anymore. You can see it full screen. I'm going to pop down to where I want to insert that audio. Slide 9. Click Insert. Click Audio. I'm going to search my stuff, I think. I'll just grab one, select. There's the audio that I want. I am just going to drag it here so the student can see it pretty clearly. You can make it bigger if you want to make sure that it's seen. You can change its color if you want to make sure that the student sees it. Um, and from in here, it will just play. The student plays it. So tip number two is to take and that will just be in the student's um, portfolio when they open it back up next time. So audio comments like that. Um, some advantages of audio comments is that you can record, you can comment directly on the slider page that you're recording on. Um, you just drag that little speech bubble into whatever thing you're making a comment on. They can be quite lengthy comments if you need them to be. This is super personal. They're hearing your voice in their ear when they're looking at it. It's very nice. If you have some generic ones, you can save them sort of like a comment bank like uh, we were just looking at. Um, however, this is three steps to get this done. So it's, it's recording from an app or a, a program. Then you have to put it in your drive. And then from your drive, you have to pull it into the slide. So I wouldn't probably do that for something that was just a one-off or just a quick comment. More like if I was uh, analyzing a paragraph or maybe a draft of something. Um, something that was worth spending a little bit of time to get between a couple of different steps. The last tool that you can use to do feedback is screencasting. Screencasting sounds like it's a big deal, but I found it's actually a bit faster than marking on paper. Um, when you make a screencast of the, uh, the student writing, you can just talk about what's on the screen. You don't have to write anything. You can use the screen tools in Screencastify, etc. to uh, to mark it up. You, there's a little highlighter tool so that you can, the student can see what you're looking at. You can type right on the screen if you need to. You can draw on the screen. This is something that um, it, it seems like it's harder to do than it is once you kind of get the hang of it and you've done a few of them. It records right in the program. It saves automatically to Drive. You just need to send that link to the student. You could paste the link inside the comments box for the student to see. Um, but you are making a little video for the student so it can be really high quality content. Um, I wouldn't do this again for just a quick portfolio exercise, but for example, for a first draft or a final draft of some, some major writing for a step in the project that is pretty important, you could make a little video and that would just look like taking the assignment like this and opening up your screencasting tool. So for example, Screencastify, um, it's an extension that you can use. I've got videos that will show you how to do that. Judy's made a couple of nice ones. You just open it up, record on the slide. You can use all the tools and features there. It saves right into Drive and then you can send that link to the students. Um, it's quite handy. So these are some advantages and disadvantages of different types of feedback inside your Google Slides. It depends a lot on what you're giving feedback on, which tool you choose. I think for me, quick little portfolio, how did you do on your weekly planner, might be very well served by some cute stickers um, or some gifts. Whereas some of the bigger projects like uh, different tasks during the study skills project or bigger pieces of writing in the writing class like the essays might very well take a screencast or some audio. 
Um, so however you want to give your feedback is fine. There are lots of different ways of doing it to suit your personal tastes and what kinds of things your students like. Um, but I hope you find something that works well for you. Thanks.